on It's Supernatural. At age 12, Franklin Walden was carried into the heavens and was told he would minister healing to hurting people and that it would be seen and heard throughout the world. He has seen the lame walk, the blind see, and the dead being raised to life. Nothing is impossible in the realm of the supernatural. Do angels exist? Are healing miracles real? Is there life after death? Can people get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 25 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth welcoming you to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Take a deep breath. Breathe in that rarefied air of heaven. Have you ever heard of a creative miracle? My guest was born with one kidney. And horror of horrors, that one kidney went bad. She was wired up for what's called dialysis. No hope outside of the only way she could live is with this dialysis. But Ruth Kersey had a brother-in-law that believed in miracles, Franklin Walden. Ruth, tell me what happened to you when your one kidney went bad. Well, I kept swelling and the fluid wasn't going out of my body. And then the doctor decided that I had to go on dialysis because I had done all different things. I'd been in the hospital off and on quite a bit. And so then I went in and got prepped for it to go on dialysis. And coming home, me and my husband stopped by Franklin and Carolyn. Uh, and we walked in and they was fixing to go to a meeting uh, out of town. And so we prayed and all of us met in the living room and prayed and he prayed for me. And he said, a word of knowledge came and he said, before you go on that, he said, have them to recheck you. Now, Franklin, when a word of knowledge comes upon you when you're praying for your sister-in-law, are, are you 100% sure that person is healed? 100%. Okay, so uh, you had this word. Did you go to a doctor? What did you do next? I went back to the hospital. Well, I went by the doctor's office and I told him, I said, I want to be rechecked. I don't want to go on dialysis if I don't have to. I didn't tell him what had happened. Now, did you believe you were healed? I knew I was healed. That's really, that's <laughs> faith. Okay, go ahead. I knew I was healed because uh, things was different in my body. I didn't have the pain. I know, but what the doctor say? That. You knew you were I, healed. Well, what the doc I want to know what the doctor said. He said, okay, Ruth. He said, I'll do it. He said, you look different this morning. That was before they did any tests or any x-rays or anything. And so when the lady that took the x-rays she said, are you sure you who you are? I said, you want my ID? <laughs> she said, wasn't you here yesterday? I said, yes, ma'am. And uh, she looked at my wristband, you know, and back at her paperwork and all. And so she ran out of the room. Well, the doctor come back in and he looked at me and smiled. He said, you know what? He said, you've got two kidneys. Two kidneys? Did you get that? She had one bad kidney. She's prayed for. She has two kidneys. Well, what happened to the bad kidney? Was that good now? Yes, it was. They did a uh, test that showed the fluid intake of the kidneys, how it was boiling out of your body, you know, and that kind of thing. And uh, they said both per uh, kidneys was perfect. And how did the doctors account for the fact that one kidney is, is on failure and it's perfect, the second kidney doesn't even exist, and now it exists? What did the doctors say? He told me it was a miracle, that only God could have done it. I'm sure of that. Franklin, <laughs> you intrigue me so much because as, as it starts with your father. Uh, your father, at one point, had an encounter with God that caused people to think he was crazy. Tell me about that. He went in the spirit six days and six nights and they didn't understand what was going on. My dad was a Methodist. Now, you say when he went in the spirit, what, what, what do you mean by that? He, words, he was more in the spirit world than in the yeah, real that's world? that's right. And he, he was, uh, shut himself away. And uh, he, uh, 
was there for six days and six nights, and my granddaddy uh, on my mother's side uh, had already prepared him to go to the mental institution when he came out after six days. While he was in there, the Lord carried him through the Bible, and he went from Genesis to Revelation because he couldn't read and he couldn't even sign his own name. And he just... He, but, but you told me in later years you would test and others would test your father because knowing he couldn't read, and you would read passages of the Bible, and what would he say? That it's not that way, son. Back up. Now, now did that. you understand that? In other words, his father could, could, could not read. And Jesus taught him the Bible, and Franklin would read from the Bible, and if he'd have one letter out of place, what would your father say? It's not right. Back up. Read it again. Now, I want to stretch you. If I haven't stretched you already, I want to stretch you further. Franklin, your mother died. What happened to her? Lightning struck her and hit her right in the crown of the head, and then it hit me too. I was paralyzed on one side. But now, I, what did your father do? My father, he picked her up, put her head in his lap, and he was praying unto God. And he said, God, I can't raise these children by myself. Please give her back to me. And as he cried, I saw it, tears dropping out of his eyes, hit mother on the cheek. She'd been dead about 30 minutes. And uh, when the tears hit mother's cheeks, life came back to the body. When you see something like that, you can never be the same, can you? Never have been the same. Oh, I, I'm going to tell you something. Just watching this show, you're going to be mentored in the supernatural. I mean, rods turned from metal to, to, to bone. Uh, uh, people fall out of trees and break their legs and they're instantly healed. I mean, don't go away. You're about ready to venture in to the supernatural like you never have before. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Franklin Walden. And Franklin, there are so many miracles in my notes. I, I don't know where to start, but maybe I'll start at age 12. You had a vision from God. Tell me about that. I was at age 12 when God carried me up in the, above the heavens, into the heavens and looking down over the earth. I saw the whole world, its sickness, diseases. I saw the problems, and he spoke and said, uh, you will see this, you will speak, and you'll minister to these people. Okay, so when you were 12, you were caught up in the heavenlies, you yep. saw a world filled with sick people, yes, and that you would help these people. Take healing to them. Take healing to them. O okay, go ahead. And. Today plays a big part in that. After we waited on the vision, I didn't know how it ever come about, but you, God had you prepared for this day, the supernatural, because it takes something supernatural to, to perform something like that. With satellites, right. etc., cetera, TV in every home. So you believe that vision you had at age 12 is going to be fulfilled right now during this telecast that you're watching. Now, Franklin, tell me about some of these. For, I don't, I, there's no other words. Tell me about the, the girl that had no pupil in her eye. She was dead, just blind, born that way, and we prayed for her under the big gospel tent. And God created two beautiful eyes. I mean, perfect eyes. What went on inside of you when you watched and you saw just a, a mass of nothing, and then all of a sudden, could you tell the color of the eyes? Oh, yeah. What color? Brown. Brown. What, what was going on inside of you? Uh, I, I, I got beside myself. I'd never seen that before in my life. And uh, two eyes created. And it just uh, it got a hold of me. The anointing came, and I knew that God, he was in charge, 
and perform that mirth for that little six, seven-year-old girl. How about the person that had had no kneecap? Well, a person tried to rape her, and they were trying to get the gun away. The gun went off and shot a kneecap out. Mm. And so she came on the platform that night, and the auditorium was having a healing crusade, and she uh, uh, said, said that they had no kneecap. I said, well, let me see. So she showed it to me in the congregation, and it was stiff, no kneecap. And I said, well, I just believe God can create you one. And we prayed, and right before the eyes of the congregation, the kneecap came in, and she could bend that knee just like she had a bread. Well, she did, she had a brand new one. But when something like that happens, I know what it would do for me if I saw that with my eyes. When the audience saw this creative miracle, did many other people get healed? Oh, yeah. And I had a Southern Baptist preacher there and his wife, and they saw it. And today he's praying for the sick and received the baptism. And I'll tell you, he's, he's carried it across the country. Okay, tell me about the person that fell from a tree. What, tell me about that healing. Uh, I was just out singing one at the auditorium that night and walked over to him. I'd never seen the fellow before in my life. And I said, you believe God can give you a miracle tonight? And he said, done like that, you know. Well, you know, he might, he might not. And I said, well, he's going to do it. So I sang a little song, and I took him by the hand, raised him up, and still I hadn't asked him what's wrong with him. I saw the crutches there, and he uh, walked, walked him back and forth in front of the stage, and when he did, uh, I went back and I told him, I said, pick up the crutches now, and he picked his crutches up and went back. After that, I said, well, I haven't even asked you what's wrong with you. He said, I fell out of a tree and I busted this leg and they had to rebuild this leg with a plastic knee and everything and two or three vertebrae was crushed and God created those vertebrae back in his back and he began to run and found out he was the pastor of a church. And uh, a whole row of people in the front knew him very well and uh, he was instantly healed by the power of God. Now, Franklin, it seems to me in getting to know you that what you're describing is not the big exception. That's the way it's supposed to be normally. Someone said that uh, your life would touch Jewish people in Israel. Explain that. This man that I said at his feet when I was a young minister, he told me just before he put on to heaven. He said, the ministry that you have will reach and the Jews will accept it. They will accept this ministry and the message you preach. Tell me one Jewish person that you prayed for a miracle that accepted Jesus. I was in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. A couple of Jewish boys was there and they just happened to drop in. I could get out of the storm, I think. Mm -hmm. It was snowing and icy that night. And uh, after the service was over, they were still hanging around the book table. And they said, we don't believe in this. We don't believe in that Jesus. And I said, well, what would it take for you to believe? And they said, uh, we don't know. I said, well, what if you brought somebody here that you knew that was blind or crippled or needed a miracle? Would you believe to know? I said, well, what would it take? So it happened to one of us. I said, well, what's wrong with you? And they said, nothing. One of them spoke up and said, oh, yes, there is too. You, flat-footed because they would take you in the army. And I said, well, pull your boots off. Had them old snow boots on. He pulled them off and I looked at his feet, pulled his socks off too before he could see them clean. I said, keep your eyes on your feet. They was as flat as they could be. I mean, you couldn't be no flatter. And I, I looked and I prayed and God created two of the most beautiful arches in that Jew's feet that you'd ever seen. Perfect. Of course, God, everything he does is perfect. And, and, and once he had a miracle, he wanted to know the God of miracles. That's normal. 
how would the world be normal? Well, it's going to be normal when we come right back because I'm going to have Franklin pray for you for two things. I'm going to have him pray for you to be physically healed. You need a creative miracle, whatever you need, and pray for you to catch the same presence of God that's on him. You're going to catch it, and you're going to be able to pray for people, have the same results. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Well, I said Roth here with Franklin Walden and Franklin. I wish I had been at that meeting you were telling me about in Conyers, Georgia. Describe what occurred. I had just stepped to the platform. I knew there was something going on in the spirit realm supernaturally. And I looked out over the audience, and when I did, there was a light, like a ball of fire, uh, and it began to move over the congregation, and it moved over 37 different people. In, in other words, it would just like uh, be above their head? Or, yeah, right above their head. And, and it would stay a few seconds and, and then, then go, go to the next person. And everyone was healed. How many people? 37. 30, 30, did you get that? This light appears above the head of 37 people and 37 people are healed. Tell me one person that was healed, what, what happened to them? A lady was there, had a nine pound tumor. They said, uh, because she weighed afterwards, and it, they thought she had to wear a maternity dress, and when it did, it just <laughs> went away, just like that. Hmm. Did you uh, did you ever see her afterwards? Oh yeah, so not long, a few weeks ago. Really, and and it stayed away. Oh yeah. So it, how how big was this tumor? Nine pounds. <laughs> I I'll, I'll tell you something. This is normal. Oh, give me the normal. I'll take it any time. Uh, so why are you called? Why, why does one doctor call you the miracle man? Well, I left my body for 21 days. What, what happened? And, with, uh, did you have a heart problem? No, I had a ruptured colon, and I left the bed oh. dead. And, uh, so you're laying in the hospital bed, but you're not in that bed. You're some, no. where, at, where are you at? Uh, uh, <laughs> First, I was uh, at a place with my family. Then my wife and I went into the heavens. And God carried us to a place. Uh, I believe it was paradise. And uh, I, then I came back, and he carried me beneath the earth and went into hell. And that's the sad part. Most people don't know, but hell is real. And when I saw what was going on and heard the gnashing of the teeth and the screams, of the dams and the doom. And then I looked, and there was some ministers there with the whole congregation. And uh, they were gnashing their teeth on this minister. So he couldn't get away. And said, uh, you told us you had the truth. You was fo we followed you. And... Uh, was that minister suffering, it sounds oh like? Oh, my. Was he going through it? If you told me that way, I suppose, as long as hell lasts, there's nothing. So this was a hypocritical minister. That was his fate. That's right. And then others that had been on drugs and alcohol or any kind of unclean spirit, they were trying to satisfy the lust, and they, they couldn't do it. And it was there. So, so all of eternity, someone that, say, uh, wanted to satisfy a specific lust is trying as hard as they can, and they can't. Can't. Talk about, uh, and, and we're not talking about for a day or a week or a month or a year. We're talking about forever. No, no point of reversal. And, and uh, tell me about that letter that you got. That is so amazing to me. Well, while I was out at the 21 days, I was walking across this bridge, and I met this lady, and I prayed for her, and uh, in the spirit, and see, uh, after I come out of this, back into my body, a few weeks later, I got a letter from her, and she was saying, while you were out, you came to me and prayed for me, and I was healed. I had the letter. God, uh, I, I can't explain it, 
So, so now, now you saw her in this 20, well, let me, let yeah. me see if I understand this. Uh, in this 21 days, you're in this spirit realm yeah. where you have a visitation of paradise and yeah. a visitation of, of hell. Yeah. And it's 21 days and you, you, you see a woman on a bridge and you pray for her. And she, she says to you that she was, she was sick and you came to her in the spirit realm and prayed for her? And healed her. Now, th now that's getting way out there. In fact, and you told me something else that was pretty interesting. When you came to after 21 days, uh, your son was there, and what did you say to him? I said, son, you know how long I was gone? He said, how long, Dad? I said, 21 days. How'd you know that? I just knew it, and it just, there's some things you just know. And in the spirit, you, you, you know everything in the spirit realm anyway. Uh, out there in the spirit world. You, you also knew how many visitors you had in At those 24. <laughs> Would you pray for our people right now that are watching? There are people that need to be healed for miracles. As a matter of fact, someone's back was just healed and someone's neck was just healed and someone's hip was just healed. You better start praying because the words are starting to flow. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Messiah, Oh God, let that anointing come upon everyone there. And that little girl that I saw last night while praying, that was crippled, that little blonde headed girl, may she be completely healed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let this anointing come upon all of our young ministers or whosoever will. Let it be upon them that they will be able to stretch forth their hands and see the same miracles. Amen. Here's what I believe. It's according to your faith. And if you were believing right now, something so wonderful has transpired. You know, when I was talking to Ruth Kersey, do you remember the woman was born with one kidney and then the kidney fit goes into fa kidney failure uh, and, and, and Franklin prayed for her? She, that, that kidney was totally healed and she gets a brand new kidney. Well, there is something worse than losing both kidneys. That's having a defective spirit. And every human is born with a defective spirit. And what I'm hearing right now, and every human is born with that human heart. And God wants to give you a new spirit and a new heart. Why? So you can have intimacy with God. It's not religion. It's not joining a synagogue, a mosque, or church. It's intimacy with the creator of the universe. That's all that counts. And I see people's ears are being opened in the natural and in the supernatural right now. And, and, and another back has just been healed. But if you would tell God you're sorry for all the mistakes you've made and ask Jesus to forgive you in your own words and ask him to live inside of you and give you a new heart a heart filled with love, give you a new spirit. He'll do that right now. And I pray shalom on you, peace. And there is peace in only one name. And it's the name that is above every sickness and every sin and every problem and every fear. His name is Jesus in Hebrew, Yeshua. Make him your Messiah and Lord now. Do that.